So we're a little bit early, but I think Harry is, would you like to introduce yourself and um, talk for um, till about, or, uh, for about 10, 15 minutes, Harry, about the issues that you've been experiencing? And, and yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Thanks, Katie. Uh, yeah, it's a pleasure, pleasure to be here uh, to talk to everybody. Um, you know, and kind of share a little bit of insight on you know the things that I've experienced uh, myself, and more so what a lot of our customers have experienced uh, through purchasing a, a new build home. And obviously, there's a there's a reason that we're we're kind of all sat here today. There's clearly you know some some issues within the home building industry, and there's there's a lot of work to be done um, over the next decade. Uh, you know, and, and beyond, really, to try and you know get everything to the level that that, that, that things should be at. So, um, uh, I've had a long running background in uh, construction over the last ten years. My family's got a small house building company based in the Midlands, and that's kind of where it all started for me. Uh, starting on construction sites uh, when I was, you know, started that starting out labouring from a from my father's company, moving on to working for um, home builders like Red Row. Morris Homes, really getting an insight into how the industry works, how site management works, and you know, ultimately, you know, how the house building process works. I moved on from working for developers and did a construction management degree to try and learn, you know, a bit more of the fundamentals about house building as a whole, uh, trying to, you know, look at uh, both the process from a commercial and a residential point of view. So then I could really kind of guide my career into the areas that I wanted to. It was actually whilst I was working for uh, Red Road that I started doing the construction management degree. And it was there really that my eyes were opened into, you know, some of the issues that were present. And Red Row, one of the, uh, you know, fantastic builder uh, for all intents and purposes. Um, obviously, as with any builder, there's bad sites and there's good sites. Uh, but it was there that I um, saw so, a bit of a trend that was occurring through through themselves through industry through the people that I'd met talking and that is with uh, really homeowners dissatisfaction increasing and over the last kind of uh, you know five years um, I've really been delving into what, why why that issue is there how is an industry you know reform can happen and ultimately where where we can do our own part and you know there's obviously a number of things that can be done but I think a forum like this is a you know a great a great way for us to look at different people's perspective and how things can move move forward. Um, so I, I set up House Scan, which is a snagging inspection company, about five about five years ago. And essentially, what House Scan is is a company where somebody ha somebody who's purchasing a new build home hires us to come in and complete a snagging inspection on their property, an independent report completed by a professional. We, um, all of our team, we've got 12 inspectors uh, dotted strategically around the whole of the UK, uh, helping home buyers really understand the issues that are present in their home or if there's no issues present in their home and giving them that peace of mind. And, and we've kind of grown quite fast because of our, you know, our clear messaging, um, you know, the feedback that we've got from clients and the reviews, which obviously are things like Trustpilot, you can read, read, read for yourself. Um, so after setting up the business, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of I went into it quite open-minded, initially just working for home buyers, And it was there really that uh, we started seeing more of a trend, which was just such a varying, uh, varying experience of different home buyers. So, you know, just with purchasing anything, really, there's people who have good experience, people who have bad experiences, but it's all too often the people who have bad experiences have really, really bad experiences. And, you know, these things can, you know, they can put divides in families, uh, you know, they can cause stress, you know, emotional stress as well, because people obviously put a lot of, a lot of weight onto purchasing, which is ultimately the biggest investment of their life. And to be let down uh, by your builder is, you know, it's it's not it's not great. So what, what we've done, we've constantly tried to improve our process. We've got a really thorough uh, recruitment process for our inspection team to make sure that we're only working with people who actually fully understand uh, building regs, approved documents, um, warranty provider standards such as the NH. Oh. 
Sorry, I think I was just I saw somebody somebody muted me. Then sorry. Sorry, um, I was trying to turn someone another someone else had that had, was unmuted. <laughs> sorry about that, Harry. Yeah, no problem at all. No problem. Um, and what what we've learned uh, f within within the industry is that you know as I was saying before, there's a number of different is issues that are present, but ultimately you know there's a few fundamental issues which are causing the problems for home buyers. Uh, we've, through our own research, using our own data, uh, we found that on average, we're picking up around 157 snags in new homes, which is, you know, it's a number that shocks some people. A lot of these issues are quite minor things, you know, painting disc defects, cosmetic issues, damage to things. And when you're building a new home, which I've experienced myself in site management and through my family, um, it's a very difficult challenge. There's thousands of jobs that need to be done to build a new home, handmade jobs. It's not like you're building a car. Uh, people too often make the reference point comparing, oh, well, if you buy a car, you don't get issues with it. Well, a car is made by a machine um, and a house is made by people. So there's going to be issues. What's happening more and more, though, is that the expectation of home buyers and the information they've got is increasing. And that is ultimately what is causing now the issue to accelerate. Uh, this is combined with what is currently pre present within the industry is a lot of demand and expectation from the government itself. The government's got a number of criteria that it wants to reach, a number of uh, you know quantitative quantitative results that uh, are being looked at in regards to the number of homes being delivered, the output of builders, and that is putting a lot of pressure on the industry and that is meaning that developers really have just been told to keep building planning is being passed through more easily in certain areas of the country builders i can get away with more and more because ultimately the the government are, are focused on the numbers and not on the satisfaction of the home buyer there's a number of things that are happening which i'll talk about shortly which are you know very promising that are, that are occurring which is obviously you know, filling people with a bit more opt optimism, which, um, you know, and, and events like this also have the same kind of outlook as well. Um, the, the, the key issues that we've come across as a business um, from working, you know, with, within the industry itself is, like I said, the demand, because the number of people trying to get on the housing ladder, the government pushing that, there's a number of different things like um, the stamp duty holiday, which was just quite quite recently finished, uh, help to buy a scheme. All this thing is accelerating people's desire to get on the housing ladder. So developers are building more and more. Um, this combined with other issues. So we, I did my dissertation on the, the quality of housing in the UK. There was actually a drop of the quality following the recession uh, post 2008 because a lot of highly skilled tradesmen were left out of business. Um, they had to leave the industry, they had to reskill, train for different jobs. And then the sudden acceleration of demand within the industry has caused a number of issues such as the the sudden the sudden desire for home builders to need to recruit a number of skilled trades fast and when you can't recruit skilled trades fast what you have to do is you have to upskill other people and that means that you often cut corners so you've got a number of developers hiring unskilled workers people not being supervised properly because the site management team are have unrealistic expectations in terms of output. They then are recruiting people who don't perhaps have the skills that they need. They've not got the time to overlook them. And when they're, for example, contracts manager are coming site to site, the conversations are often less about, you know, the, the quality of the homes being built and more so about the numbers that are being reached. You know, what is the spreadsheet looking like at the end of the month? Have we got any red numbers? And the red numbers don't necessarily relate to dissatisfaction of customers, but more so the number of homes being built. And that is just accelerating now, because um, rightfully the government are, you know, relying quite heavily on the construction industry, particularly house building, to prop up the economy because of the damage that was done from COVID. So this is kind of really creating a little bit of a, um, a downward spiral. I think there's a lot of work to be done. But I do think, as I say, there's a number of things happening. The biggest thing we've seen as well, and the biggest change that has occurred recently, um, more so in, in, in the last 10 years, you know, from my own research and from my own experience, is social media. People, you know, there's a number of things now in, outside of house building as well, where people are becoming much more educated. People can talk to each other a lot easily. There's a number of Facebook groups for each different builder, you know, from, um, I won't name specific names, but, you know, builder's name, horror stories, uh, bad, bad, you know, bad experiences, all these different kind of groups that have been created that people join them 
before they even purchase the home. Um, and then they kind of, it's, it's almost starting on the back foot for the builder because the home buyer is expecting the bad quality. That doesn't necessarily stop people from purchasing these homes, uh, but what it does, it creates, uh, you know, the customer starting, the developer starting off on the back foot. This is obviously great that transparency is there, but what it's also doing is creating all too often unrealistic expectations from the home buyer. Is, is for us, we often do inspections for people who have brought a fantastic house and maybe we're picking up you know, 30 minor snags in a property, in a large property, which is for all intents and purposes, a, a, a good report often, if it's, if it's minor issues. And then that customer can be distraught that they think they've got 30 issues and it's terrible. We can do an inspection for somebody who has purchased a, you know, a similar kind of home who have got 200 issues severe and because they don't really know or have any reference point of how the industry works and what the home is they kind of just let it slide and they they, they let the builder get away with it so there's, there's almost a conflict for the home but the home buyer home builder has to deal with when it comes to um, assessing the customers and managing them this is why us as a business have kind of concentrated on how we can help home buyers by giving that transparency, providing them with a rapport, it doesn't look for anything that's not there, and ultimately just gives them a reference point as to the issues that are present. And there's actually a number of people on this call today, um, both uh, within this panel and um, within watching on YouTube, who we've done inspections for and helped massively. We've helped people, you know, communicate with their warranty providers. We help people speak to the developer in a way that you know doesn't cause more friction. And that is what's all important. Um, another another problem that we're seeing more and more of is from warranty providers themselves. There's a vast array of different warranty providers now. Um, some great, some not so great in our experience. Uh, but the problem that the industry has is that the the home buyer the home buyer themselves has no choice as to what warranty provider their developer uses. The developer has full control over the warranty provider used. We had an experience once where we went to uh, one of the largest volume house builders in the UK, completed an inspection for them in, um, it was in a different re region of the country to what we'd done other inspections for them, for their home buyer. And the, co the house should not have been signed off. There was a number of what we call red items was present within the property which ultimately meant that the builder shouldn't have been able to get um, at the time a CML, uh, which is certificate of mortgage lenders, uh, which allows a house to be signed off and handed over for purchase for the customer. There was a number of issues that should have prevented that happening. We delved a little bit deeper into what had happened, and this is a common issue. We delved a little bit deeper into what had happened, and it turns out that that volume house builder in that region has started using a different warranty provider because the warranty provider they were using before was not giving them sign off on their properties. So the builder has complete choice over who they pick to sign off the property, which ultimately has a knock on effect where you know the the warranty provider although they're you know as with any warranty it's kind of schemed as it's for the home buyer in reality they're thinking about their clients and they're thinking about the damage that you know any issues that they pick up can do to their clients which in itself creates a little bit of a, a cycle which can cause problems um, there is great experiences we've seen from home buyers purchasing new homes with their warranty provider there's also really poor ones and some of the smaller ones don't have the resources to support home buyers and all too often now developers are picking these smaller warranty providers because these warranty providers need more clients they want to get on the ladder they want to build their businesses and so they're letting things slide more more and more um so you know there's, there's a number of issues there that, that i've mentioned that we, we've seen ourselves but there is a lot of positive things happening now in the industry. Uh, we sit as part of a panel, um, which is part of the New Home Quality Board, where we discuss issues with quality of homes in the UK. That is headed up by a gentleman called Douglas Cochrane, who um, is starting reform in the industry, really, with the creation of the New Homes Ombudsman. Uh, Douglas and his fantastic team have come up with some really great ideas and the, the code is currently out for tender at the minute. People can uh, read the code, look at the changes that are present. One of the big parts of that is that they're going to introduce um, uh, as part of the code a way so that any single person buying a new home in the UK has a legal right to inspect their home pre-completion or assign an independent person or company to do that on their behalf. It's such a fantastic shift because we all too often, I would say uh, 90, 
90% of the time, probably more so 100% of the time for volume house builders are not allowed into a property pre-completion. So the builder outright refuses any access because it's their property. They own it. Why would they want us coming in, causing them problems when the home buyer is going to purchase it at the end of the day? So uh, the code looks at a number of different areas of this, really exciting ways in which you know, home buyers have more rights and ultimately gives a course of action should the builder and the warranty provider fail the home buyer, which is obviously exciting. There's a number of other really interesting things happening in the industry um, that can affect housing uh, one of them being modern methods of construction something that myself and my team have put a lot of research into and we're speaking to stakeholders within the industry who have involvement with this around how this looks like over the next decade um, you know, and, and, and beyond so this looks like in the form of other countries modular housing uh, ways in which houses can be created in factories much like a car um, and then set up much like a um, uh, you know a, a shipping a shipping unit um, and stacked on top of each other and built and made to look like a proper house built with the same, uh, you know, built in the uh, the same way as what you would stack a site a site office on in terms of they just build them on top of each other and then finish it off on site. So that's obviously an interesting way in which quality can be improved. It's very early days with that. Um, I, I, another area of improvement the industry is looking towards is BIM. Uh, building information modeling. This is something that has been pushed hard by the government and any public projects now, um, the government insists that the builders uh, incorporate BIM. So how BIM looks like is uh, a number of different ways in which uh, BIM can be looked at or perceived. Um, most people see it as um, 3D modeling of, of um, construction projects, mainly commercial projects, um, and they can be just dissected out and looked at um, analytically as to how it should be built instead of using basic plans, the house can be looked at in a 3D way to properly be properly be built and, and referenced as it's been built. There's other companies, um, one, one, one to mention is um, Open Space. Open Space provide a way for developers to look at um, a, live, a live visual of the property and the construction site as it's been built. And they do this by putting 360 cameras on the hard hats of construction workers. And when that, that construction worker is walking around the site, the camera is constantly taking 360 pictures and stitching it all together using AI so that builders can look at the projects um, live at any point and more importantly if issues occur they can track back and see often exactly why the issue has occurred and that is a, um, a US-based company um, and a similar com company is to them but that is a US-based company who are innovating how construction will look like over the next uh, decade and beyond. Um, we've also created our own product, uh, we've created an app called Build Scan. Um, and what BuildScan is, is an app. Uh, we soft launched that in November um, and we're doing a full launch in about a month's time. It's downloadable on the, um, the App Store, iOS and Android. And basically BuildScan is a snagging app. BuildScan is a way for people to snag their home or their construction project. And it's for home buyers, it's for developers, it's for architects, it's for groups, construction projects, maintenance companies. Um, and what we're looking to do with that is innovate how, P how inspections work, because ultimately building a house is um, a set sequence of tasks with issues put in it between each step, you know, things that the developer finds, the warranty provider finds. And what we're doing, we've created a way for builders to, in a really simple way, um, map out the issues in the property, what's next, what's coming up, adding their whole team and complete inspections. We've got a number of exciting uh, pieces of development that we're working on relating to this, which include incorporation of the check, a checklist for home buyers when they move into a home so they can complete their own inspection. That is something that I think is going to provide a lot of value. And what it also does is help with expectation. Because as I mentioned before, one of the issues that we have in the industry is expectation of home buyers. And so with a checklist that provides a point by point document that, you know, is not necessarily black and white, but it at least moves a little bit more towards people understanding what the quality should be and what it shouldn't be and allowing them to document it themselves provides transparency for the customer. Um, so that's an exciting project we're working on. We're looking at a number of other ways we can incorporate different things like building regs into the app. We're creating a app for training within the industry so that defect prevention issues can be trained upon, something that we're kind of putting out now, speaking to stakeholders on, on how that, that looks like for the industry. We've already got a team who've built the framework of the product now, so we just now need to speak to the right stakeholders within the industry so we can build out this training product, work with apprenticeships, colleges, work with 
builders more importantly, so that their team can be skilled up and understand when an issue occurs, how they prevent it happening again um, and what the issue was instead of that lack of supervision coming into play. And um, so, yeah, I'm going to work towards wrapping up now. Um, there's there's a couple of other things I wanted to mention, though. And uh, one of them was really uh, giving some advice to people buying new homes. So social media, although it has caused problems in different areas of society um, and it has caused benefits for different areas of society, social media provides a great way for home buyers to speak to people in the same situation as them and get on the front foot and look at what the builder can do. So it contradicts slightly my point of it causing the developer issues, but the reason it causes developer issues is because it's creating that transparency. It's getting people talking, it's getting people asking the right questions beforehand. Um, another thing I would do, I would say is that we hear all the time people purchasing homes from, people, from developers or on sites where they know there's gonna be problems, or perhaps the, the, they know a builder who's got you know, good sites and bad sites, because all builders, particularly volume house builders, have good sites and have bad sites. There's not really any such thing as a bad builder. There's just a builder with bad sites. Um, and so uh, social media is a critical part of that because you can soon understand that you can find, if you find a large housing development in the UK, if you type in the name of that development on social media, you'll probably find a group with all the residents in there. So you can join up to that group, speak to the people there, um, give yourself an insight as to what this situation is. If everyone's having a bad experience, don't buy that home. It's, it really is that simple. Don't buy a house on a site where the developer is got having a lot of issues. It's often the site managers had a high turnover um, the other thing I would say and I would recommend for home buyers is to speak to the people on the site. It's common sense, really, in the fact that if you're buying a house on a construction site, then it makes perfect sense to go knock on the door of somebody and knock and ask their, their experience. Why not? You're spending such a massive amount of money. You know, if they're not friendly, then you know, maybe that's a bit of an indication in yourself. You know, someone will answer the door to you and you can speak to them if they've not got a group. Giving yourself that information is so important. And, you know, as we help home buyers get that information, you know, there's also ways in which they can do that, like I say, through using their initiative to look on social media, speak to people on the site, engage the issues or, you know, the well-being of that site itself. There's, a, there's another thing as well, which we've learned within the industry, which is a real shame, really. Um, and that is that people who shout the loudest will get the most work done. We have customers, like I said before, who pick up, we, we, we do an inspection for somebody, we pick up 200 issues. Let's say it's on the same site. Uh, we pick up 200 issues um, on two houses for two different customers on the same site. Without a doubt, the customer who shouts the loudest and sends the most emails to the developer will get the best outcome. And that is a shame that it works like that, but that is just how it works. Um, and the, the, we see it day in, day out, people contacting us saying that, oh, you know, well, this developer got our report, they've not really actioned anything, what do we do? What you do is you keep emailing them and you stay on the heat because there's a there's a catalogue of customers that they're looking at and the ones that they help are the ones that are at the top of that list. And the way you get to the top of that list is by continually asking the developer and showing them that you care about the quality of your home because people just give up. People get fed up and they get drawn into um, ongoing debates, issues, the developer telling them that things are within tolerance, they've got no reference point other than speaking to a company like us. Um, the warranty provider's not really necessarily on their side always uh, so that that means that they're kind of often on the back foot back foot um so yeah that's kind of uh you know the, some of the, just some of the the stuff that we've learned over the last kind of uh, five years since I the company and 10 years since being in the industry for myself um, you know we're always looking at ways in which we can help the industry um you know whether that is through you know the app that we've built build scan snagging house scan we do work for snagging inspections for developers as well for investment groups contractors um, there's a lot of investment in the uk as everybody knows from overseas places such as hong kong um, we work with agents there we work with Harry, developers Harry, yeah. i'm afraid we want to have a chance for us to ask you questions perfect can you yeah I don't know if there's, do you want to say any more before you wrap up? No, that was it. That was literally okay. found that perfectly then, Katie, because yeah. uh, I was okay. just, just finishing up there. So I just want to welcome Philippa, who, who joined. Um, do you want to, we've had a chance to quickly, the councillors who were here quickly um, introduce themselves. Do you want to introduce yourself, Philippa? Thanks, Katie. Thank um, and, and it was very interesting what I came in on from Harry. Thank you for doing that. Um, yeah, as, if you can look behind me, um, I came onto this quite hastily. I live in one of the new builds on Clay Farm, 
And so I'm very much aware, not just as a councillor, but as a resident of things going on, large and small, and how sometimes we can get them sorted and sometimes we can't. So dealing with it systematically and put a bit more upstream than I am at the moment would be very helpful. Thank you. So I've got a few, a couple of questions, but to me, would you have a question for Harry? Oh, hi. Uh, thank you very much. That's very interesting. Um, you mentioned briefly MMC. Um, have you done any inspections on any of these at all? Um, we've not done less direct inspections. We've done market research um, on this area, um, speaking to stakeholders, looking at the products themselves. So we've not been paid to do an inspection on there, but we have looked at different versions of this. Um, I would say that there is still issues with how that looks in terms of quality in some areas it's not a perfect outcome um, because all too often these are still finished on site but you know it's a starting point for the industry really and that will be improved over time to the point where you know really if you like it or not that your home will be built by a machine um, and that will improve the quality of it i would expect i mean i've been to an mmc factory to see how they build uh, how they put these things together and it seemed quite impressive to me in fact we are currently on nosto here in south Cairns, have part of nosto being built out by urban splash so i will yeah. be keen uh, to see if you can do something on one of those <laughs> and compare with a, a standard house but maybe we can take that offline yeah maybe maybe we could um yeah you know, i'm aware of urban splash as a business um you know maybe it's worth um you know myself having a conversation with them and you know because some good PR for them ultimately, wouldn't it? If the house, if the mm. quality of their homes are improved through MMC, mod, modern methods of construction, um, then yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So Heather, I don't know if you're listening in and want to ask a question. Thank you. Um, I'm keeping my camera off because the internet problems, I'm afraid. Uh, so I'll pop it on to speak. But um, but yeah, you mentioned one of the problems was with unskilled work. And I'm, and that was sort of seemed to be one of your main main concerns about quality. Is this something that you think would help to resolve that issue, or is there a there is a place obviously for we people need jobs um, yeah. as well? So how would you see a way to resolving or squaring that circle, as it were, or um, making the circle square? <laughs> I don't know which way around the saying is. Yeah, I understand. Um, um, yeah, no, it's a great question, Heather. It is. There's, there's, I mean, there's a lot to think about. There's a lot to discuss in, you know, a short period of time, really. There's a lot of fantastically skilled tradesmen. There really is. Um, you know, we see it all the time. What you'll find if you talk to most developers now is that they're really struggling to get hold of tradesmen and the prices are going up and up and up. Um, and a new issue that has occurred is following Brexit. Um, you know, because a lot of people have left the country, a lot of these tradesmen have left the country mm. now, and it's created um, a short supply of, of work again. And that short supply will lead to more people coming into the industry and not having the relevant training and doing the work. The way to overcome that is, you know, it sounds straightforward. It's not necessarily as straightforward as what I'm going to make out. Um, but ultimately, people being trained up by other skilled workers is the number one way in which you skill somebody up. Um, like I say, it sounds obvious, but it's just when there's so much demand out there and there's so much pressure, that two month, um, that two month shadowing period that a plumber has is now two weeks or a month often. Um, and if when the builder is allowed to keep building with really no effect to them you know you see constantly in the mainstream news about and on newspapers about uh, developers having letting the home buyers down the customers down those builders are still selling more houses than they can deal with um, you know it doesn't make a difference to them really and so when there's a new person on site who's perhaps not skilled it's so easy for them just to go well we do it and uh, we'll check it after and then does it get checked maybe potentially um, but when you're building hundreds of thousands of houses a year that maybe or potentially is a lot of things that slip through the net harry one of the things one of the things i'm shocked about is how little information new home owners have when they buy a house and how little explanation they have about how a house works um and the other thing i found shocking was that you you, you said that the 
the, the more a, a homeowner shouts out, they get to the top of the list. So is there a way to try and um, increase the knowledge of what people can expect? Or how can we as counsellors help those who aren't shouting loud enough? Yeah, no, it's, again, it's a great, it's a great question. Um, you know, there's, um, there's not a black and white answer to, the, to that question. Um, there's a number of different ways in which the industry is shifting towards doing that. Um, I mentioned briefly about um, a product that we're building, an app. Um, that is going to help train people up on issues. Uh, we're currently st speaking to stakeholders. We're opening. Um, we're open to partnerships with stakeholders as well within the industry. You know, if anyone wants to chat to us about this. Um, but what that will do is allow for uh, developers, without going into too much information, um, it will provide training for site teams. It will provide a way for people to monitor that training, test that training. Um, but also, what it will do is allow for home buyers to see what the builder's been trained on and if a builder if a home buyer knows what the builder is supposed to be doing it makes them in a much better position to um, act upon issues to speak to the developer and have that knowledge that they've got there's 400 pages in it for example the nhbc which control about 80 percent of warranties for new homes in the uk um that's uh, realistically that's a, that's a massive amount. Um, they've got a four hundred page book of standards. That four hundred page, no home buyer is going to read that. Most people, most, most site managers don't even read that. Um, you know, so that is where the information is and how the home should be built. And that information needs to be put in an easy to digest way. You know, and that is what we're working on. Actually, is a way for home buyers to get that information, have that transparency. And as I say, if there's any stakeholders uh, within the industry or people who want to talk about it, please do get in touch because we're in the process now of creating in that product separate to build scan you know a training product for for the industry okay thank you um philippa i know you want to have, ask another question but we've got so much to get through i think what what I'd, what we've committed to is any questions that come in through youtube or any that the councillors want to ask if you send them to me i'll speak to the experts and we will get them answered for a report that we'll i'm preparing to come out so I'd just like to thank you, Harry, very much. Really interesting, um, bit shocking at times, but it, um, hopefully with particularly some of the exciting technology you've told us about, things will be different. Brilliant. Thank you, Katie. Thank you so much for setting up this event as well. Um, you know, it takes people like yourself, you know, to, to kind of do these things, may, may help start the leg off on the, on the right foot. Um, but ultimately, I think it's really promising what's happening in the industry, particularly with the incorporation of the new homes ombudsman. So it's exciting to see what's going to happen. I think that people like yourselves, councillors and you know the public and other stakeholders talking is really healthy. So let's keep it going. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So I want to bring in now 